he, he takes us to a place where he changes us, his secret place. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to talk about nine different areas that we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to bring about change in our lives. Amen? Last week, our sister Denise spoke about the power of prayer and how, be, how that because we, we, des, we pray because we desire Yahweh to bring about change, positive change, in either our lives or the lives of someone else. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So, you know, a lot of us don't like change. I think a lot of us are holding on. We, we try to have control in our life, you know. And so we don't like change. Change shows, when things start to change, unless we're, we're changed, doing it changing. But if things outside of us are, start to change, you know, sometimes it makes us nervous. We're scared. We get fear of the unknown. We get fear because it, we feel a lack of control, you know. And, um, but the Bible tells us that um, even though we don't like change, Yahweh's all about change, ain't he? Amen? Hallelujah? Praise Yahweh. Now, we're going to either change, we're going to change one way, and we're either going to change for the better, or we're going to change for the worse. Okay? It's, 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 a, it's a matter of our choice in him, which way it is we change. I mean, I know we, we have Sir Isaac Newton with his uh, first law of motion, and uh, you know, it really it shouldn't be called his first law of motion. It's basically Yahweh's law of motion. And he just discovered it and describes it as such, right? But in his law of motion, he describes it this way. He says, everything continues in a state of rest unless it is compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. Well, I want you to, say, to know that we are the object in which the forces are compelling up, you know, upon, you know, in one direction, either change for the, to the, for the side of light or change for the side of darkness. Amen? <coughs> Hallelujah. And, and we don't rest like, in the, you know, like, like, I, like the law of motion says. We, there is no standing still. If you're standing still, you're going in the wrong direction. Amen? You're either going one way or another. Our job is to continue to go forward. Amen? I want you to turn with me to a place here called 2 Corinthians 3.18. And I want you to know that the only thing, the only thing that's, that's constant, the only thing that never changes is the fact that there is change. Amen? Amen? That's the only thing. Many of us, like I said, hate change. Some of us, there was one, one guy, he, we, he quoted him, I have him quoted here, it says, any change at any time for any reason is to be deplored. That's just not Yahweh. If that's how you feel, that's just not Yahweh. Amen? And I myself am one who doesn't like transition. I don't like change. I don't change quickly. You know, I'll put it that way. I don't like surprises. I don't like that. But I know you're always trying to grow me up out of that immaturity. And me, and try to let me know that I got to, you know, I got to blow when, 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 you know, when not any kind of wind, but when, how his spirit wind blows, you know, in my life. You know, I got to bend or else I break, right? Hey, man. Okay, 2 Corinthians. Let's say first or second. I think I said second. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. I have a different re rendering, but just read along. It says, And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue, remember, we're the object that the forces press upon, because we continue to behold in the word of Elohim as in a mirror the glory of Yahweh, we are constantly being transfigured or changed into the very own image, into his very own image, in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the master who is the spirit. Amen. You see, for the life of the believer, we are the forces that are supposed to impress upon us 
is supposed to be the Holy Spirit. And it's supposed to compel us to change. And we're supposed to be constantly being transformed. Amen? The Bible says from glory to glory, from, from faith to faith, you know, being perfected in the image of Yeshua the Messiah. And what does this change, what, what, what brings this change about is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Hallelujah. Now let's look at these nine areas. Nine areas in which we ought to pray. Okay? And, but before we even begin to pray, we got to realize, like I said, that the Spirit is the catalyst for change. Amen? It's, and through our prayer, we get in touch through, you know, with the Spirit. It's through Spirit-filled prayer that miraculous change could come about in the life of not only myself as an individual, or yourselves as an individual, but as in, in the church as a whole. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So, we need to realize this. The Spirit is a catalyst for change. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. And without realizing this, we can, we can pray ignorantly or, or, or pray amiss. Hallelujah. We need to realize, hallelujah, that the Bible says that the uh, righteous, the prayers of a righteous man develop much. And, and the Bible further goes on and says that it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, save Yahweh of hosts. So we can learn from this that mountains in life are moved. Miraculous change comes about as we pray the spiritual prayer, as we pray for the Holy Spirit to bring about what it is the change that is required for Yahweh's purposes. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Change is what we're talking about. The Spirit is a catalyst. What is a catalyst? A catalyst is something, or in the Holy Spirit's case, someone that precipitates change without being altered in the process. Hallelujah. Praise us. Praise Yahweh. The Bible tells us that through the mind of the Holy Spirit is how Elohim can clearly see and understand what's in everybody's heart. Amen? And we can trust that because Yahweh through his Holy Spirit can see what's in our heart, he knows exactly what type of change we need. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. Look at uh, verse 27. We'll back this up. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. When you get there, say aye. All right. And he who searches the hearts, he, who we talking about? Elohim, the spirit. Yahweh, who is spirit? Who searches the heart knows the mind of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with the Elohim's will. So as Yahweh searches our hearts, he knows the mind of the Spirit who intercedes on our behalf, Hallelujah, in accordance with Elohim's will. So number one, prayer application. We need to pray this, that when confronted with stubborn people, all right, and sometimes I'm the stubborn person, sometimes you're the stubborn person, right? People who lack motivation or passion or even confronted with, with, with perplexing situations. We need to pray or ask our, fa our Heavenly Father to help us, to, to help, not help us, but to help in, in bringing about change in the people and the situations that, that we are working with in the, in the church and around us. Amen? We need to say, Father Yahweh, change this, hallelujah. We need change, your change, positive change. Amen? Hallelujah. As, we, as we're thinking about our, our, our Wednesday night prayer meeting, we need to remember that, that it's by his spirit change will come about and bring about change in those around us and in the circumstances and situations in our life. Amen? Amen. Praise Yahweh. 
Now, I want you to know that, remember, like I said, the first law of motion. Hallelujah. It's, it's us who the Spirit moves upon. And when we look at people, people who are us, we got to realize that some people take different degrees of the light of the Spirit to change. Some people, when they first see the light of the Spirit, change. So others, they don't change just because they see the light. Some people, the light has to get brighter. It has to get more intense until they begin to feel the heat. And then they begin to change. Only then. And then you have those who, even after the heat intensifies, they still don't change. And, uh, and they never repent and unfortunately end up burnt. And I, can, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? We don't want to be those. It's be- I mean, it's best to, when you first see the light, change. But, it, it's even, but even if you don't do that, the next best thing is to change when you start feeling the heat. That's you always spanking. But we don't want to suffer till we, till we suffer the wrath of that light, which is his fiery wrath, which the Bible says, hallelujah, is, is, is a very terrible thing to experience. Hallelujah. Amen. The lake of fire. We don't want to experience that. Amen. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, even so, before we can expect the Holy Spirit to change the perplexing people and the, and the situations around us, how about asking him when we pray to change the most perplexing per- person of all, yourself? Me. I need to change me before I can change you, right? Right? Yeshua put it this way. He said, first take out, this is a paraphrase, the splinter in your own eye. Then you can see clearly to take the log out of your brother's eye. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I don't have the power to change myself, how am I going to expect to change the world? How can I get frustrated with you when you don't change the way I think you should? When I need to realize, actually, instead of getting frustrated with you, I need to have more patience with you and more understanding because I realize that I don't have the power without the Holy Spirit to change myself. And therefore, I can't expect you. You don't have the power to change yourselves either unless the Holy Spirit help you, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Sir Thomas A. Kempis said it this way. He said, be not angry that you cannot make others as you wish them to be since you cannot make yourself as you wish to be. Amen. This is why we got to understand this, not by our own might, our own power, but by the Spirit, Yahweh's Spirit, that we are changed. That's why we sing songs like, uh, sing with me, listen to Yahshua, right? Say what Yahshua said, keep on looking at Yahshua, do what Yahshua did, and he will turn your life around. He will turn your life around. Then you will turn this world around. And he will turn your life around. Yes, he will. And you will turn this world around. Hallelujah. Let's give Father Yahweh a praise clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit does it. The Holy Spirit uses a variety of gifts, a variety of abilities and personalities to affect change within both the church and us as individuals. I'm telling you what, he'll bring some interesting people into your life. You know, some people that you might even consider strange. Look at throughout the Bible. You know, we looked at, you know, he, he did some strange things to affect change. He used some people in some strange ways. He used some peculiar people. Jonah, strange character, you know. He uses some, the most interesting people. He'll bring them to life. But you know what? The Bible says we're supposed to be a, a peculiar, strange people. Amen? So if you ain't strange, something wrong with you. You know? Because he, you might be the strange person he brings into someone's life. 
to exact or to, to, to catalyze change. Amen? Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. But he uses all kind of gifts and all kind of talents. Turn with me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to read uh, 6 and 7 with me. Hallelujah. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 6 and 7. Hallelujah. We're going to see how Yahweh Elohim is able to bring all these different skills, all these different personalities, and, and, you know, and he's able to harmonize them. Amen? Harmonize them to bring about change, change for the better. It says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 6 and 7, there are different kinds of working, but the same Elohim works all of them in all men. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Amen? It's for the good. The reason why Yahweh brings different people, different personalities, people don't think like me. I'm so glad Yahweh doesn't have only people that think about me. And it's, oh, I'm glad he has you and you and you. Someone who thinks different than me, but all of us who are trying to, to learn how to think and how to have the mind of Messiah. People who love Yeshua so that some things that I might see in my shortcomings or that I might lack, you know, he, he's able to give it to you because maybe you're a little bit more, he's, he's developed you a little bit more broadly in certain ways of thinking. And so that we can come together and work for the common good according to the spirit of Yahweh to promote change for the better, right? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. So what's the prayer application? Application number two. We need to ask the Heavenly Father to help us, you, me, to understand and cooperate with the way that the Spirit, not us, but the Spirit is harmonizing in a wide variety of people's gifts, abilities, and personalities to affect changes in ourselves and the church. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. We need to realize that that strange person, that's a gift from Yahweh. Right? <laughs> right? Hallelujah. And, 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 and honor and respect that person. And pray that we, Yahweh would give us his wisdom and how to work in him. Hallelujah. The, sp the Holy Spirit acts as an effective power broker. In other words, he, 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 he knows what he's doing. We can trust him he, to bring about spiritual changes. Hallelujah. He has authority. He's able to influence people, hallelujah, with the wise use of his power. Amen? Hallelujah. Paul wrote this. He says, Elohim has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and discipline. 2 Timothy 1.7. You see, I think a lot of times the reason why we so want to control everything the, the reason why, even in, in we, as we try to minister, though we have the Holy Spirit inside, we don't use we don't use the power of the Holy Spirit because we are afraid, because we're afraid of letting go, letting control go. We we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid because we don't know where the Spirit may take us, and we don't really. The Spirit may may ask you to walk around naked and or lay on your side or something. The Spirit may ask you to do something that pulls you outside of your comfort zone, that pulls you outside of your control, that pulls you in to do something that, that only Yeshua would do. Right? Right? Hallelujah. The Spirit will not let you stay the same. He won't let you stay the same old you. He will make you do something new outside of with the same old same that you're accustomed to or used to in your little realm of control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to learn to without fear of failure, without fear of the unknown, trust in the power source of the Holy Spirit. The reason why we wear ourselves out so much and go through all kind of unnecessary problems and troubles in life and end up repeating the same mistakes and find us back in the same place of, of failure or, or falling short 
and wonder why we, we cannot have success is because a lot of times we're, we, we rather trust in our own limited strength, our own limited mind. As, as dear sister here spoke earlier, you know, we're, we're trusting in our thinking instead of what? Praying and consulting the Holy Spirit, consulting Yahweh and what he has to say. So he can and let him sort out. He can do a much better job than we can, right, sister? Amen? A much better job than we can ever do. Hallelujah. But we're so afraid. It, to give you the, an illustration, the railroad company, before railroads uh, were, were, were developed, in, around the 1800s, they began to uh, promote the idea amongst the people. And uh, you, if you understand, before railroad tracks were, were built across the country, we had to, in order to, 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 to take large supplies and people and, and medical supplies or whatever we have and, and, and resources across the land, it was much more time consuming, much more aggravating. People had to, um, you either had to go by boat, ship, around the, the coast, you know, around the, the oceans and seas, and, and, you know, that would take so much longer, so much time. Or you would have to, you know, go by, go up through uh, rivers and canals, treacherous canals, and that you never know will be blocked and everything like that. And it, you were winding paths, and it would just take forever. A lot of times things, things happened, storms, things didn't make it. Um, but then they developed, our people, someone got the idea of building a railroad track. Steam was coming about. They found a power, this power in steam, locomotion, you know, better than, than, than horse, horse uh, transportation or beast, you know, carrying things because you have to rest the, the, the beast. This thing kept on going. You just kept, just kept supplying it with fuel and it went on. It was more efficient, more effective, more powerful, make life easier. It, you know, it, it would make all the other ways of transportation at that point seem like snail crawling, you know, you know, in a, in a road runner, you know, going, you know, in a race. The locomotive was, was, was that powerful and that efficient. But a lot of people opposed the idea. Here's an example. Hallelujah. We, let, me, let me read a letter that someone wrote to the then President, uh, I believe it was President Jackson. Uh, it says here, as you may know, Mr. President, railroad carriages are pulled at the enormous speed of 50 miles per hour by engines, which in addition to endangering life and limb of pastures, roar and snort their way through the countrysides, setting fire to crops, scaring the livestock, and frightening women and children. The almighty Yahweh, they put it on Yahweh, certainly never, never intended that people should travel at such breakneck speed. Uh, this says Martin Van Buren, governor of New York. Okay. Now, we see here how people are afraid of the unknown, afraid of, 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 of a tool that proved effective and efficient. We can now move, move they, they, they built tunnels. Instead of going all the windy paths, the, the tra railroad track goes straight through mountains, straight as, as the crow flies to the destination and deliver supplies to town to town. Even today, they still, you, you can see the train riding up through uh, the strip district. You know, to drop off supplies. It's still one of the most effective means of, of, of dropping off supplies and stuff today. But that's how we are. Because of fear, we have such an enormous, efficient power source that, you know, that we, that would so much make things easier so that we can accomplish the task. We don't want to use the power of the Holy Spirit because of fear of, of losing control. Amen. So what's the prayer application? Number three. Let's ask Father Yahweh to help you and I to appropriate hallelujah, this wonderful helper, this wonderful power supply given to us in the Holy Spirit and trust upon Yahweh Elohim who has given us his spirit to fulfill his promises in our life. Amen? We need to pray and, and, and trust that, that we can do this. You know, because for a lot of us, we've been stuck We've been stuck on still and not trusting and trying to work against the current in our own effort, in our own strength. Amen? Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit is a solution giver. Hallelujah. He causes changes that will only increase the Messiah's kingdom. He causes changes 
that will cause his righteousness to grow. Amen? The Spirit does not quickly offer solutions to people who are not ready or available to him to do his work. Hallelujah? The only way he, he will give you these opportunities and these things is if he knows that you are available and ready to use them. Turn with me to, to 1 Corinthians 12, 8. Most of you are familiar with this. It says, To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Now, many times we know that the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, if I lack wisdom, I am the ass of it, and he will give it to me, upbraided, you know, he will give it to me, he will, he, he, a father, he's our heavenly father. He's not going to give me a stone if I need bread. He's going to give it to me. But sometimes, Father Yahweh, he may give it to you directly, but sometimes he doesn't give it the wisdom directly to you, but he still gives it. So another, no, no, let me give you what I'm talking about here. Say I'm facing a, a situation with the church as a pastor, and I don't know, I don't have the wisdom or even a knowledge of how to deal with that situation. It's a difficult situation. I say, Yahweh, give me the wisdom. Yahweh, give me. Yahweh may not give the wisdom directly to me, but he will give it to me by sending me you. Sending someone, maybe even someone from another church or someone, you know, from a sister church or someone. He will bring that, that wisdom or that knowledge to me through someone else. Amen? Hallelujah. He gives some knowledge. He, I might have the knowledge, but don't know what to do with it. So he'll give me the wisdom on how to use that knowledge. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, even though as a, I'm a member of the body, I might, I might lack, you know, the knowledge or wisdom that you have. If, alongside other members of the body, I, he always shows me that I lack nothing. Amen? I lack nothing. I have everything I need because he sent me Brother Tony with the knowledge. He sent me Sister Beth with the wisdom to come alongside. All I have to do, though, is whatever that Yahweh has put in my heart to do, or put, or, 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 or whatever purpose he has for me to do, is be ready and available to him, and he will send me and give me what he knows I need to complete his purposes. Amen? Hallelujah. That's all I have to do. Hallelujah. He will send me people who specialize in certain areas where changes are needed. The Holy Spirit knows how to connect you and me with, like I said, a wide variety of people, organizations that enabled us to effect the greatest changes for his kingdom. Turn, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to go up to 24 and 25. When you get there, say aye. It says, But Elohim has combined the members of the body and has given great honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Did you hear that? He says, the parts that lack it. If I lack wisdom, if I lack knowledge, that doesn't mean that you are to leave me. A lot of us are, are, are separate me or cut me down or, or, or look down upon me. A lot of church people do that, you know. They say, oh, sister, sister, they're ignorant, man. You know, look, look down on them. And, uh, you know, brother so-and-so, he, he, he doesn't have wisdom. And they, they, they use it as an opportunity to get boastful in their pride and puff themselves up and, or, or, you know, or maybe even leave or separate from one another, you know. And that's the enemy. That's the flesh. That's not Yahweh. Yahweh says, says the very opposite. He says, but Elohim has combined the members of the body and has given great honor to the parts that lack it. He's given greater, great honor, greater honor to the parts that lack things so that there should be no division in the body. It's not a time to separate. It's not a time to talk about charity. You're supposed to give greater honor. You know, to, if, you, if you have more, 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 more um, knowledge than me, more wisdom than me, don't cut me down. Don't separate from me. Give me more honor. Come and join me and, and bring me further on, you know. Let's, let's grow stronger together. If I feel like I, I know more than you, I shouldn't, if, if I got it going on that much, then that means 
I don't need to tear you down or make you look bad or, or separate. I can, I can come alongside you and all the more and help lift you up in the love and uh, the Father Yahweh has shown upon me. Amen? Hallelujah. We should be stronger. Amen? Because not every poor can do everything. The toe can't see. The eye can't grab. You know? The mouth can't smell. There are going to be parts of us that we're going to lack other things and we need other members to help us. Right? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what's the prayer application? Number four. We need to pray that Father Yahweh, to, that he by his spirit would co connect us. Hallelujah. Connect you. You know, or empower you to, with, with people who are able to supply you with the wisdom, the knowledge, and the skill to accomplish the very best of Yahweh's purpose, plans, and process. Ask him, like I said, to help us network with people who are specialists and, and, and to bring about strategic changes that are needed to accomplish his will. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. We need to be able to have a, a mind that sees that, you know, where we're limited and looks for Yahweh to bring that other person that, that can help us out so much. Hey, man. The Holy Spirit is able to help you negotiate. Hallelujah. He's able to help us negotiate as far as when dealing with perplexing people and situations. How, how to say the right things. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. He's able to, to help us to deal with, to, with, with kinds of people, well, all kinds of people with, with, the, with, with uh, wise words. Dr. Luke wrote something about Paul. He wrote this in, in, in Acts. Chapter 26, you, you guys could turn there real fast. Acts chapter 26. He, Paul was talking to a person who was a king, Agrippa. And he, he had to negotiate before the king. You see, Paul had people that were accusing him of all kind of things. He was in a bad place. He was in a, you know, a life and death situation. So, if, you know, the, how many here, raise your hand, know that the Bible, Yeshua said that when you're brought before kings and magistrates talking to his disciples, don't worry about what you have to say. For, for even though you know not what you say, at the time you need to say the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. How many know that? Raise your hands. Amen. Well, thank goodness we can, uh, we can uh, rely on the Holy Spirit to do this. It says here, Paul says, King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense. Paul was making his defense against all the accusations of the Jews. And he goes on and it says, therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. You see the skill, the tact by which Paul spoke? You know, the Holy Spirit can, will lead us. And skill, to skillfully, tactfully address certain perplexing and complex situations. He can give us the negotiation skills. Amen? So what's the prayer application? Number five. We need to ask the, 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 the Heavenly Father to help us use wise negotiation skills. To bring about the best solutions for dealing with perplexing problems of people. Aren't we trying to go out and do, and, and do a work for Father Yahweh? We don't just want to stay amongst ourselves, right? There's this important work we have administering to each other, but we also need to go out and minister to people and places. Yahweh may bring you before, before rulers, before powerful people, and you need to be able to speak wisely. You need to be able to speak appropriately. And, you need to, and so we need to ask the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to help us with this, right? Is this one of the things we should pray about? Right? Is it important for you that you speak wisely and represent the kingdom of heaven? Hallelujah. In a wise way? Aren't we supposed to be as wise as serpent, but as gentle as doves? Right? In all ways, in, especially with our mouth, our mouth, which can be a very destructive thing, which can, can spew for both, uh, uh, what do they say, both uh, sweet water and, and, and uh, and, and uh, I guess, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? What would you say? 
bitter water, you know? We have, to, especially with our mouth. Halia, we need to let the Holy Spirit control our mouth so that, so that we can, Halia, speak forth wise negotiation, good words. Amen? Halia, praise Yahweh. Oftentimes, the Holy Spirit takes us away from, from like I said, our comfortable zones, from our secure life situations. He, you know, the things that we, that we want to hold on to. And he leads us purposely through perplexing changes. That the thing he takes us, he, cha- he uses the familiar things around us, the people around us, the, the situations around us that we're familiar with, and he causes change in them, hallelujah, so that we might have a greater clarification or understanding about things that we maybe don't, didn't see before, or maybe some things that we are, have been um, clouded or, or, or deceived about. Look at this country, United States of America. We're not as secure as we once were, are we? No. Are we as secure financially as we once were? Are we as secure as a superpower? No one would dare mess with us, right? We're America. No. You know? But maybe that's good. Maybe Yahweh is, is realizing that it's better for us. Because, you know, because when he, you know, to be insecure now, to be unstable, because when we were stable, when we were secure, we began to go further and further away from him. Right? Maybe it's better for, for America in this country, in this lifetime, to be unsecure, to be, to be uh, assaulted upon, to be fearful, so that many people in this life would begin to turn their eyes back to Yahweh and, and that they might, they might be saved for eternity. The, maybe it's better for that to happen than for the, in this life, America, to be secure, to be all comfortable and thinking that they're on top of everything and go nice and securely into the lake of fire for all eternity. Maybe. You think that's better? You know, what, what's better? What do you think? Do you agree? You know? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. America is in a whole world of trouble. But you know what? Yahweh's going to work it out. Hallelujah. As we pray for America. Yahweh oftentimes in the perplexing situations of life brings about, he brings about the things that we need to see for clarity. Look at Eliah. Eliah was, 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 was being chased down by Jezebel, life-threatened. He was feeling bad, pity party. Oh, Yahweh, just let me die. I'm the only one, the only lonely little voice crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> right? Do you know that, that Father Yahweh, he had to bring some clarity to Elijah, so he brought him up into this cave. He let Elijah go through a whirlwind experience a whirlwind he let Elijah experience an earthquake he let he let Elijah feel, feel the heat of the fire and in the and it was within the spinning the whirlwind the fire the conflict the turmoil that, he, that Elijah heard the still small voice you know and Yahweh basically had to smack him upside his head and said you're not the only lonely little voice crying out in the wilderness you know I have so many thousands of people tried and true standing for my cause. He had to let Elijah know the truth of the situation, the reality of the situation. That's what he needs to do with America. That's what he does, he does oftentimes with us. Amen? He lets us know. He knows that oftentimes he's the potter. And, and we say he's the potter and we're the clay, but he... But we, he wants us to realize that sometimes he has to bring us in a spinning whirlwind. Amen? He, in order so he can take out some things, so we can see and understand clearly that we need to stop fighting against him. It's, it's in the whirlwind, in the difficulties of life, that he, he brings out and lets us see things about ourselves. The impurities, through the fire, the impurities that are in our life, the, this, the selfishness, that is in our life. The, um, uh, everything that, that, that is not supposed to be in our life, 
that we're not even aware of sometimes comes out and comes to light in the whirlwind, in the perplexing and the difficult situations of life. When, we, when Yahweh sends that difficult, perplexing person to you, it's to test you and to try you so he can perfect you, so he can bring these things out of light. But he doesn't, not, he doesn't do it just to condemn you. He doesn't show you your faults. He doesn't show you your lack to condemn you. He shows you your lack because he loves you and he wants to, you to be aware of your own problem so that you can change for the better, right? To change you for the better. That's why he, he, he does these things. Amen? So that you might have opportunity to repent and that he can grow you and perfect you in the, in the, in the image of his son, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Matter of fact, we see, we see that Paul agrees with this in Ephesians. Turn there. Ephesians 1, 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 18 says, I pray that your eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance, his incomparable great power for us who believe. I want you to know if you look at Elijah in the whirlwind that he was seeking to hear Yahweh's voice. It's not, there's many of us who, who, who go through hardships and stuff, but we're not seeking Yahweh's voice. And without seeking Yahweh's voice, you're not going to see what you need to see. Your, your eyes are not going to be enlightened so that you can, you can grow in, in, in Yahweh's purposes. So remember that it's not good enough just to go through the whirlwind and the difficult things of life, but you must seek what Yahweh's doing through his spirit in those things. Amen? Hallelujah. So what's the prayer application? Hallelujah. We need to ask Yahweh to give us clarification to see what he is doing during the times of confusion, the uncertainty and doubt. The way that he does this may not always feel good or even appear good, but it's good for us. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. For those who are, who are called by his name and love and trust him, it's good for us. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is able, he's, a process, he, he, he's, he's able to help us in the process. As we go through the process, he's able to help us. He's, that's why the Bible calls him a comforter. How many know the Holy Spirit is a comforter? Raise your hand. How many know that Yahweh not only sends difficult times to you, but he comes alongside you at ever-present help in time of trouble. Raise your hand. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Elohim is a comforter. Amen? And there's a scripture here, 1 Peter 5.10, where it says, it says here that the Elohim of all grace, you don't have to turn there, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Yahweh will restore you. He will strengthen you as he takes you through the difficult times of life. Hallelujah. If you believe me, say amen. 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 You're not believing me. You're believing the word of Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. So we need to, to ask Yahweh. The prayer application number seven is we need to ask Yahweh to help us, to help carry us through to the completion of his will and, and the completion of, of his, his developing our character, right? Amen? And our relationships and our ministries. You know, how many of you know that, that as you're going through, even though you know it's Yahweh taking you through, even though you know it's his discipline, sometimes you feel like I still, I, I'm not going to make it. How many, raise your hand if you feel that. I, I need help, Yahweh. I know it's you bringing me through this hard time, but I'm not, I, I, feel, I, need, I, I need you to help me. Yahweh will do it. And we need to pray that, not only for ourselves, but for others. Amen? Because sometimes it's, it's tough. I remember when my dad, you know, used to wear my behind out with his belt. I didn't think I was going to make it a couple times, right, Tone? <laughs> I said, I don't know if I'm going to live through this, this right here, you know? Help me, Dad, please help, help. The very one spanking you, you're like, help. All right, Dad, all right, all right. <laughs> you know? 
And you, you know, your dad has mercy. And, he's, and he stops after he feels you had enough. <laughs> earthly fathers, <laughs> earthly fathers may go overboard. They may go a little bit too much. They might go a little bit too little. But your heavenly father, you can trust him to know just when it's time to let you go. He won't give you more than you can, you can take, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As stated before, the Holy Spirit is not, is, is, is not only able to perform this, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's not o- only able to, to help us with, with key relationships um, and help us to bring up the change, hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit, he also puts a love in our heart for other people to the point where we begin to pray for people. We get to pray for them that the Holy Spirit would help them to, to, to carry on his work, even when we're not around. You know, I know my father, he, he, one of the things he, he uh, had in his heart and he prayed for when he realized that he wouldn't be long among us, our, our pastor, it was this, was that those that he left behind would be able to carry on the work of his church. You know that? He prayed that, he, he, one thing he would ask me, he said, is the church going to go on? When I'm gone, is the church going to go on? And, I, and we would say yes, you know, you're always going to do it, you know. And so we need to pray for people that they will continue to, to do the work of Yahweh. And I'm not just talking about when we go to heaven or pass on. Uh, maybe when we go away on a, on a trip. Uh, and when I, if I go away, away I want to know I have Brother Tony, Sister Beth. You know, Sister Rose, Inez, to step up. You know, uh, even people, we, we can even send it further to even people who have come and, and been a part of our church for a short time and then left us. We want to pray that Yahweh will continue to, to, to help them to go on and fulfill his work, his, his purpose in their life. Amen? Hallelujah. That's the prayer application. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. We need to ask Father Yahweh to be with each and every one of us. Our young children, after we leave here, young men and women of the church, the Williams, the Marks, the Nishas, the Jamie, they will continue to carry on. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Now, here's a song I want us to sing together, a prayer song. You know, it goes like this. Move in us. Oh, Holy Spirit, sing with me. Move in us today. Quicken us by the living waters. Let all our fears just fade away. Heal the wounded with the bond of Gilead and cause us to know the joy of thy salvation. One more time, say the prayer. Move in us, O Holy Spirit. Move in us today. Quicken us by thy living water. Let all our fears just fade away. Heal the wounded with the balm of Gilead. And cause us to know the joy of our salvation that should be the prayer for all of us right hallelujah we should pray that the holy spirit and that's the last this is the last prayer prayer number nine application pray that the holy spirit give us an openness of heart you know keep open with you know for new things that yahweh the spirit is doing in our hearts within our church within those around us you know Opus, openness of heart is essential for growth. Hallelujah. We should pray that the Holy Spirit 
bringing us a disdain or dislike of ruts. We don't want to stand still because remember, standing still means we're going backwards. You know, we don't want, we, we want to constantly be looking for a better view, a new thing of what Yahweh is about to do in us today, tomorrow, in the next moment. Looking for the Holy Spirit. You know, there was a man who bought a, 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 a new TV, and he, he brought it in the house, sat it on the top of the entertainment center. He plugged it in. He turned it to uh, the channel, to the, the gospel music channel. And he programmed it, so that's all he could ever watch and see. And see, what he did was he got himself a, into an expectation of, the, of, of, of he knew that he was going to be seeing and watching the same old same. You know, he knew he was going to be watching music, listening to music. And, and so, therefore, he cut himself off of the other many pr good programs that Yahweh had for him, such as um, Cornerstone Television. Uh, what, what's the other ones? Um, TBN. Yep. Yeah, Daystar. Yeah, Daystar. All, he cut himself off of a whole bunch of other things that Yahweh would have for him. And he, was, he, he don't even realize it. He just... He knows already what he's going to see, what he's, what's going to experience. He's in a rut. He's not open to other things, you know? And Yahweh doesn't want to be like that. There's marriages like that where either the husband or the wife or both, you know, they, they're just letting what the inevitable go on. And what will be will be. And instead of looking for new things, we should always be looking for new things in our relationships, especially our relationship with Yahweh. When Father Yahweh made you, when you first came to salvation, he made you a new man, right? A new man, and a new man that, is, that will never grow old, right? You'll always be a new man. You're supposed to be a new man walking in the newness of, of Yeshua, of life. So you're always looking for the new things that Yahshua is bringing and, and introducing to you. Hey, Amen? Never grow in a rut. Never be old. Hallelujah. So with that, we're gonna, I'm going to end with the song. Yah, I want to be a follower of Yah. Hallelujah. Yah, I want to be one of his disciples.